Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the County Commission meeting for Tuesday, March 22nd, 2016. I'm Kirsten Katmeyer, Chief Civil Deputy State's Attorney. Uh, because our chair and vice chair are both not here uh, this morning for this meeting, but we do have a quorum, uh, we need to uh, appoint a chair pro tem for the purpose of this meeting only pursuant to uh, SDCL 7815. So I'd ask that the commission members here uh, consider that at this time before we get started. I'd like to make a motion to nominate Jeff Barth to act as commission pro tem for today. Okay, is there a second? I'll second it. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know he could do that otherwise. Oh, well, he's not the chair yet. I'll second. Okay, All right, thank you. Um, any other uh, nominations? Otherwise, uh, go ahead with a uh, voice vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? All right, motion carries. Chairman Barth. I'd like to call this meeting to order and ask you to stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, uh, I'd like to remind you to please silence your cell phones and uh, documents uh, about the meeting are in the folder over by uh, Commissioner Bender. Uh, if you need uh, a hearing device, uh, you can speak to uh, our Commission Assistant Robert, who's right over here. Okay, on to routine business. I'd like a motion to uh, approve the agenda. So moved. Second. It's been motion moved and seconded. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Uh, it's unanimous. Like a motion to approve the county commission minutes from March 15th. I'll make that motion. Second. It's been moved and seconded. All in favor say aye. 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 It's unanimous. And we have bills to be paid of $3,782,815.48. Pay the bills. Second. It's been moved and seconded to uh, pay the bills. The auditor Top. has approached the uh, okay. podium here. And Auditor uh, Bob, uh, what do you have to say? Uh, good morning, uh, Commission. Bob Litz from the auditor's office. And due to Mr. Barth's recent elevation in status, uh, he's asked me to come up and comment on some of the bills that we're going to be paying today. And out of the $3.8 million, uh, the state payment to, to, for motor V fees is over $3 million. Uh, we send that in on a regular basis to the state. Also on the bills this week, the sheriff has six new vehicles, uh, totaling $154,656. Uh, so, you know, the uh, fleet, uh, aging fleet that he has is, uh, is getting replaced, as has been our plan for a long time, so it's happening now. Uh, also, we made a, a huge investment in our insurance. There was eight different insurance uh, payments made to various uh, parts of the county, totaling $218,788. And then also, in the amount of bills we had this year, as, uh, as to CHS, uh, Children's Home Society, we did our annual payment of $89,250. So those are some of the more notable items in today's bills. Thank you, Bob. Uh, any questions for Bob? It's been moved and seconded to pay the bills. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion passes unanimously. We have reports that are on file with the uh, uh, <coughs> auditor's office. We've got one from the Register of Deeds. We've got one from the Juvenile Detention Center. And we move on to personnel actions. Carrie Deaver. Good morning, Carrie Deaver from Human Resources. I'd like your approval on the routine actions for this morning. And I'd just like to make a quick comment that you'll notice that the first item listed is Wanda Marie Fox's retirement. She's been with the commission office for over 16 years, and we can't thank her enough for all that she's done. We certainly have uh, valued her uh, time here, and uh, she was here before I was. Is there a motion on uh, personnel? I'll make the motion. Second. It's been moved and seconded to approve personnel. Uh, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion passes uh, unanimously. Item B under personnel is an addendum to 
administrative services agreement between our county and uh, UMR Incorporated for health plan administrative services. <coughs> Here about this time, I'm in front of you asking for your approval to have the chair sign an amendment for our, our UMR agreement. Typically, we negotiate fees in three-year increments or three-year contracts, and so we're in the middle of a contract right now. It's increasing approximately 3% each year. I have looked over the addendum to make sure that the rates are correct with what we've agreed both under the contract and due to recent conversations with UMR. So today, I'm asking for your approval to have the chair sign that amendment. Is there a motion? I'll make a motion to approve. Second. It's been moved and seconded. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion passes unanimously. Thank you. Uh, at this point, then, I'm looking for, aha, we have Kyle from uh, Equalization here on item 6A, an assessment freeze on a property tax uh, RDID number 22815. Again, this is an elderly assessment freeze through the treasurer's office. I guess I'm replacing the treasurer this morning. She was a little hectic with uh, the lines and things down there. So we're asking for your approval for uh, record ID 22815, 2000 property taxes in the amount of $738.78. Is there a motion? Motion. Make the motion. Second. It's been moved and seconded. All in favor say aye. Aye. Our motion uh, passes unanimously. And, and by the way, when there are only three of us here, we have to do every action unanimously. Uh, we're... Uh, we can't pass something two to one. Okay, uh, notices and requests, there are none. Planning and zoning notices, there are none. Petition for a compromise of lien, today we have none. And then we have opportunity for public comment. Uh, anyone interested in coming forward to speak, uh, please come forward, uh, give us your name and address. Dan Shipper, 1404 South Kinderhook. Have something to pass out. Thank you. My name is Dan Shipper, Sergeant First Class, U.S. Army, retired. I was a 13 Foxtrot Ford Observer. Uh, because of my many, my moving every 24 months in the Army, a home purchase was not wise. I purchased my first home in 1999, 7204 West Strabane. This year, let me back up. When we planned to purchase a new home, of course, the payment, taxes, and insurance costs were discussed in, in great detail. And of course, uh, tax raises were one of those subjects. Uh, this year, the government, from whom I receive a pension, decided to withhold the already agreed upon 1.5% 1 1 COLA. I understand that's one part of government and this is another. However, it has to do with uh, me paying my bills. This year, after living in my home for three years, the value has went from 280000 to 330000 This is the assessed value. I'd like to point out uh, in the handout that I gave to you, 1404, that's the top um, subject matter here, um, valued at 330000 Annual taxes, 501 uh, five thousand one hundred thirty-one thousand dollars and thirty-seven cents. If you look at the square footage, which is not correct, because uh, my basement has been finished, so the basement square footage will increase. But at this time, I'm paying a dollar forty-six per square foot in in relative. Um, if you look at the next subject matter down, fourteen hundred. Uh, South Kinderhook. You look look at their value at 372, and their taxes are already 5,759 dollars. Their square footage is increased because their basement is fully finished, and that figure is in there. So their value or the 
per square foot is $113 per square foot. It's all relative. If you look at 1401, this is a little different, but it's still comparable. Uh, there's no basement finish, so therefore, uh, in line, if you look at their value and their uh, taxes, their cost per square foot is $1.69. You got, have to consider that they're, they're paying more for the upstairs because it costs more to build that. Uh, anyone, I'm, I'm sure, can see that. Uh, so 1408 and 1405 kind of fall in line where um, end result their square or price per square foot hundred dollars and 123 dollars is still a lot less than mine at a dollar 46 per square foot understand mine will go down and it will even out because uh, my basement or my my total square footage will increase However, uh, as I look at these figures, I'm being taxed more heavily than just about anybody on my block. There's five com comparables. Open any questions. Commission, have any questions? What was your address again? 1404 South Kinderhook. Ten Kinderfoot? Kinderhook. Kinderhook. I'm curious, Mr. Shipper, if you've gone through the equalization process to appeal your taxes. I understand this is my first step. Okay. Well, this wouldn't be a required step, but that would be the step where we could actually take any action on this. <coughs> That's are you asking me a yeah. question or are you making a statement? No, I was making a statement. I'm sorry. Um, I, and uh, the commissioner is correct. There is a process to appeal your valuations. and. Uh, you know, the staff would be here as well at that time to uh, 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 bring the forth their comparables and explain their reason for uh, uh, the valuations. Uh, I think, you know, you and I visited just briefly before the meeting, so not only did your valuation go up, but your taxes also went up, right? Because it's also possible that people's valuation would go up, but their taxes would stay the same. Um, have we uh, have we gone past the date where we can appeal valuation? Dan, uh, if you would let uh, Kyle Excuse come me. to the podium. The deadline for valuation appealing was last week, Thursday at 5 o'clock, to go to the local boards of equalization, whether it's the town or the township. Okay. Is, is there any other alternative at this point? Uh, no, sir. That's the first step in the process. If you do not accomplish the first step, there is no going on to the county or to the Office of Hearing Examiners. This is South Dakota codified law. Kyle, on, on our uh, tax statement that we mail, our valuation statement that we mail out, that has the process on it, doesn't it? That is correct. We mailed out 71,000 of them with the exact same process on the back of the card. Do you have a recommended uh, plan for uh, Mr. Shepard here as far as... Uh, he can come down to our office, request that one of the appraisers go out and take a look at his property. That will be sometime this coming summer. It will not affect anything until next year. Our hands are tied by state law. Right. However, uh, if, if there was a mistake made, your staff could maybe change that. Not at this point, no. For next those, year. Those, those numbers have been turned over to the local boards of equalization, okay. whether it's the city or the township or the towns. The next step beyond that is then an appeal to you as the County Board of Equalization, you then have ownership of the records. There really isn't anything we can do at this point. Excuse Thanks, Kyle. Me. May I speak? Can I, can I ask uh, just a minute. Question. Uh, Commissioner Kelly. Can you tell me what school district you're in? Um, the closest uh, is Roosevelt, but, and then there's um, Discovery and... Okay, you're not in the Harrisburg School District then? No. What it, it should say on here what school district it is. Discovery Park Station. Yeah, South Kendall Hook is 49-5 Sioux Falls School District. Okay, thank you. I'd like to also say that I have been to that office uh, at least three times, if not four, 
and my understanding was this was my first step. You know, I, there's, you know, I've read this, I've been online, read different things, so obviously <coughs> I was miscommunicated to. Thank you. Any other <coughs> comments from the commission? Well, Mr. Shipper, I appreciate you coming in. Um, uh, there's nothing we're going to be doing at this point, so uh, thank you. Is there anyone else that would like to take our, uh, advantage of the opportunity for public comment? Okay. If not, we'll move on to uh, regular business. Um, <coughs> Item 10, the first item is a public hearing and second uh, reading to consider a request for rezoning 16-01. Uh, Scott Anderson. Yes, thank you. Scott Anderson, uh, Minnehaha County Planning Department. Today is a uh, public hearing and uh, possible uh, a second reading and possible final adoption of a rezoning 16-01. This is to rezone property described as Dawson Track 2 in the southeast quarter of Section 12, Township 102 North, Range 50 West. The property is located at 25773 <coughs> 472nd Avenue. This is generally described as the northeast quadrant of the uh, Crooks exit right off of Interstate 29. Uh, this item has gone to the Planning Commission and uh, and was recommended unanimously for approval. The copy of the minutes from the February 22nd Planning Commission are uh, have been included for your review. And the hearing uh, notice was published in the papers and the hearing notice was set for today, so this is a public hearing. I'll be glad uh, to go over some of the pictures with you generally and uh, be then available to answer any questions. Okay, so this is the, the uh, location of the property. You can see uh, the, the interstate and uh, the county highway that this uh, takes access from. It doesn't have direct access to the interstate, of course. This is the proposed site plan by the applicant. And I'll uh, mention that this is approximately four acres. It's 3.89 acres. The applicant currently has a large building on the property which has in the past been used f as an agricultural uh, enterprise as the tree farm and there historically has been a tree farm at this site for many, many years. This is the shop that has been utilized by that tree farm um, activity. This is the property that's to the south, directly south of, of the proposed site. This is across the street to the east and this is looking north. Uh, you can see the paved county highway uh, which, from which this property takes access. This is looking directly south. You can see the, uh, the bridge over Interstate 29 and the uh, Crooks Renner Road or Highway uh, or 258th Street. This is the property uh, looking at where the proposed use would occur. The applicant eventually will be coming in for a conditional use permit to build some um, storage <coughs> units and this is the location of where those storage units will be constructed. This is looking directly across the, the interstate to the west which shows the existing commercial activities that are uh, occurring on the other side of the interstate. Um, I'll go back to the site plan. The Planning Commission found that it, it does meet the uh, <coughs> intent of our newly adopted um, comprehensive plan, the Envision 2035 plan. This is a area which is transforming itself into a commercial area. It's at the, inter it's at, the uh, at an interstate interchange and that's where we have been recommending uh, growth to occur. The applicant is here. Uh, Planning Commission recommended approval. Uh, today, you, this is a public hearing. You can either approve the rezoning request uh, or deny the re rezoning request, um, but uh, it is a public hearing and I'd be glad to answer any questions you might have. Commissioners, any questions for Scott at this time? 
I'd there like to ask the proponent to come up uh, if he one wishes. One question, Scott. Oh, there was no question. opposition at the uh, Planning Commission? Uh, there was, I wouldn't say opposition. The neighbor to the north, which you can see the there's a larger residential lot there, uh, had questions about the drainage. There there was some, some issues with a collapsed pipe out in the highway right away uh, that goes under the driveway. There was some discussion about uh, having that fixed and the applicant is working uh, to to do that other than that um, that was really the only question that came up and the during that conversation it was noted that the applicants property is is much higher than than the property of the south so all the drainage is flowing to the south she just had the neighbors to the north just had concerns about the culvert in the right away thank you thank you Scott um, so would the applicant care to say a few words? Good morning, Commissioners. Tim T. Hart, 25524, 472nd <coughs> Avenue. Um, the main concern was uh, uh, the collapsed, or actually it's a silted culvert in the driveway, and we're going to replace that and another one in a, an, uh, another driveway and oversize them. I'm going to have... Uh, Midwest Land Survey and Sukup are going to do the site plan and the drainage and the dirt work. Thank you, Mr. Tehart. Any questions, commissioners? Thank you very much. Thank Is you. Is there anyone here in opposition on this uh, issue? <coughs> Seeing none, I <coughs> throw it back to the commission for action. I make a motion to approve the rezoning. Second. It's been a motion to approve, um, uh, so I'll call for a vote. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries unanimously. So we go on to item number uh, 11, a public hearing to consider retail on off sale of a malt beverage license. And uh, uh, Ms. Jefferson, I'm going to ask you to read the exact <coughs> details. You. Uh, the auditor's office did receive applications for an on and off sale malt beverage license and also for the transfer of an on sale liquor license from Norby's Rocky Run to Great Life at Rocky Run Golf Course. Great Life is taking over the bar management um, at that golf course. Uh, the legal description of the license premises is M Madsen's Track 2, about lot A, except the east 400 feet, northwest quarter, the southeast quarter, section 8, township 104, range 49. Uh, the applications have been reviewed by the state's attorney, planning and zoning, and sheriff's departments, and there were no objections or concerns reported by any department. And there is a representative from GL Management here if you have any questions. Otherwise, I'll turn it back to the commission for action. Thank you, Cindy. Um, would the applicant care to have any comment? Don Hill with GL Management. Uh, we entered into a long-term lease with Rocky Run Golf Course last year. Uh, however, we did not do the food and beverage, and so this is to, uh, we would be taking over food and beverage operations at the, at the course, and we've hired uh, uh, the representative or the person from Norby's uh, to run it for us. So that's the nature of the, of the application. Commissioners, any questions? So generally nothing's going to change out there for people that are used to playing golf out there it's going to be the same management of the food and beverage just under a different ownership structure that's correct yeah perfect no with no other questions i'll ask if anyone is in opposition on this seeing none i'll ask for commission Make action. A motion to approve second it's been a motion to approve uh, all those in favor say aye aye, aye. Same sign, motion carries unanimously. <coughs> so now we have a uh, public hearing to consider retail on of mal uh, sale malt beverage and wine per the Byron Incorporated. I could turn it over to Cindy. Thank you. Uh, the Archer's Office received applications from Amanda and Josh Nelson for an on and off sale malt beverage license and an on and off sale wine license for the Barn Incorporated. The license premises is legally described as track three, except number one of Corral's edition, the southeast quarter of section 36, township 101, range 51, Wall Lake Township. 
And these applications have also been reviewed by the state's attorney, sheriff's office, and planning and zoning, and there were no objections reported. Uh, the applicant, actually Josh, is here today to answer any questions that you may have. Any questions for uh, Cindy at this point? We'll go on and ask the proponent uh, if he has wants to make any remarks. Josh Nelson, 204 Park Drive, Lenox. Um, I think you're all fairly familiar with the project, so it's just kind of the next step in getting going. As always, we'll, we'll meet any codes, do any necessary classes or anything to make sure that we function within, the, within our legal rights and move forward. Any questions? Any questions? I'm just curious when you anticipate having your <coughs> first event out there. July 2nd. Great. Congratulations. Thank you. Josh, is that a party for the commissioners then, July 2nd? <laughs> I was hoping to have one for you guys before. <laughs> uh, but you're making great progress out there building. We are. We've made leaps and bounds this week. Uh, we should be starting sheetrock next week in it, actually. So, And uh, trying to finish landscaping by June 1st. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone in opposition on this item? Seeing none, I'll throw it to the commission for I'll action. I'll move for approval. I'll second. It's been moved and seconded to approve uh, this. Uh, all in favor say aye. 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 Uh, all opposed, the motion passes unanimously. Uh, item 13, it's past 9.15 a.m. so we can begin this public hearing to consider the 2015 carryovers and 2016 supplements in the amount of $470,665.11 in the general fund and uh, $1,743,823.35 in special, special revenue funds. Good morning, commissioners. Kim Adamson from the auditor's office. And we have a number of uh, supplement, uh, carryover supplements to consider uh, supplementing the 2016 budget. Um, I have a, a summary list I wanna bring up here. Um, there are a number of departmental items in the general fund, which you can see summarized here, totaling 470,000. Um, these items fall into two categories, one being items that were budgeted in 2015 but were not paid during that uh, fiscal accounting cycle. And so we typically do su carryover supplements um, to supplement the 2016 budget. The second category represent grant funds that hadn't been expended by the end of the fiscal year. So we also carry those forward into the next budget cycle. There are also a number of item, there are a number of items in the special revenue funds as well, um, rep representing similar um, uh, commitments made in fiscal 15 that we did not pay for in that accounting cycle. Were there any questions about specific items? I'd be happy to answer those. I always ask this, and I, you'd think I'd have it straight. These are items where they've either been contracted for or done but not paid in That's 15, correct. and so we're just moving this money over to the 16 budget. That is correct. They were appropriated in uh, fiscal year 15, but we were not um, billed or we had not completed payment on those items. And one other question, what in uh, the surplus, at, if a department had a surplus at the end of the year uh, and there's not a commitment on it, what's are, are those funds transferred into general automatic? Into they are not, um, they do are we not. Have to take action to do that? We, we would, we, we are only carrying forward those items, they were, um, appropriated in 15 and we did have financial commitments associated with those. Those are the only items that we do carry forward. Okay, at what point do we address the, uh, if a department had a million dollar appropriation and only spent 950,000, what, what point do we move that back to the? Uh, well, those funds then um, 
accumulate to our um, fund balance in the general fund. So they create equity in our general fund. And they're not usable by that department. Not until we would appropriate in a current budget cycle. Thank you. Any other questions? Hearing none, is there uh, anyone else that wants to speak on this item? There's a public hearing. Do we require an action on, on this? Okay, commissioners, we need to take an action on this. I'll make a motion to approve. I will second that. That's good. Um, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign, passes unanimously. Thank you. Now we go to item 14. Uh, consider a resolution to restore the tax deed 2589 record ID 48648 to the former owner of record, Robert Wilson. Commissioners Robert Wilson of the Commission Office. This is a property owner that our office, the Treasurer's Office, and the Auditor's Office have been working with uh, for a number of years on a, uh, a back tax uh, bill for, for back taxes that was uh, getting to the point where it was close to being listed on your, uh, uh, for on your um, tax deed auction last year. And we, uh, uh, in working with the former owners of record, uh, they um, worked out and, in, and informed us of a, a plan that they felt they could uh, follow to become current on their, uh, on their taxes and restore the, uh, restore the deed. And last week, the treasurer's office did receive a payment for all back taxes, fees, and interest. Um, and uh, I can bring up the amount. It was in excess of, of $16,000. The treasurer's office received that. So the action before you today is to restore the, the deed to the, the former owners of record. And as I'm searching here, I'm trying to pull up the trying to pull up the exact amount that they that they uh, that they paid. Sixteen thousand one hundred ninety-seven dollars and forty-four cents. So the uh, the motion or the the resolution that we're looking for your action on today is to to restore the the deed to the former owners of record based on the fact that they have paid taxes and are now uh, taxes, fees, and all, all interest and are now current on their, their property taxes. Are there any questions for uh, Mr. <coughs> Wilson? Robert, uh, so this had obviously gone on for a, a few years and uh, thank you for working to uh, bring it to resolution. Uh, is there any other comment from anyone on this? Obviously, it's great news whenever somebody gets their taxes brought current, and it's good for them, good for us. So I'd make a motion to approve um, the resolution to restore the tax deed. Second. It's been moved and seconded to restore this uh, deed. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion passes unanimously. Um, so then I think we're on to 15. Item 15. Uh, Aha, Highway Department's here uh, to authorize the chair to sign a professional services agreement between Minnehaha County and HDR Incorporated in the amount of $99,380 for construction administration services for project MC110-118BM-16 rehab structures, and there's two of them, 5192.40 and 5241.80. Good morning, Commissioners. Jason Reeves, uh, Project Engineer with the Highway Department. Um, these two projects were bid about six weeks ago, and uh, Sioux Falls Construction, aka Journey Group, was the low apparent bidder and have been awarded the contract. Um, after that, we <coughs> enter into agreement with our engineering firm for um, construction administration services, which is mostly inspection for the two projects. The one bridge is a Big Sioux River bridge near Minnehaha Rural Water. The other one is over Slip Up Creek on the short piece of roadway to Eros. Um, these are rehabilitations to try to keep these two bridges in um, top-notch shape so that they're on you know, important highways, paved highways, so that we don't see any postings on those in any anytime soon. So 
Um, this is, like I said, Construction Administration Services with HDR, who is an engineering firm in Sioux Falls that we uh, contracted to do the design on the project and are asking for uh, a new contract with them for these services. Commissioners, any questions? Is this the bridge on the Big Sioux north of Baltic, south of Del Rapids? Is that yes. Okay. Yep. Yeah, the, it's, there's no interstate access to that county highway. It's right. Highway 110. But Bill, it's an important bridge. Yes. Yeah, it's a I think it's about 300 feet long. So to replace that bridge would be very expensive. So rehab is a good thing for it. Looked good to me when I drove over it at 60 miles an hour. Oh, maybe it was 55. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, but uh, you guys, your inspection showed there was problems. Yes, there is a, um, it's in, we were originally only on that bridge going to do the low slump overlay on it, which is like a two inch um, concrete overlay because the deck is becoming delaminated. So they take out the bad spots of the deck and put this two inch concrete overlay on it. And uh, as it got inspected further, um, they found that it had, uh, one of the abutments had shifted and, and locked up and had cracked. So that um, added a pretty significant piece to this bridge. And actually that's part of one of the previous items with the carryover is this project because we were going to just do that bridge last year. Um, but this issue came into play and we had to amend the design agreement to do the abutment fix on that also. If I might, uh, how long will that bridge be out of commission? Um, it will be totally out of commission, I believe. Uh, there's there's two dates in there. It's somewhere around a month to six weeks, and then it will be one lane. Oh, that will be when they fix the abutment because they have to they have to jack the bridge up to knock out the old abutment and pour new concrete in place. So then, when that's complete to do the deck rehabilitation, they'll put it as a uh, one lane with um, stop lights or so stop signs on either end, and then they can do that in halves. And then that's how they'll construct the Eros Bridge also, because that's only a um, the overlay. So we won't be impacting the Eros people a whole lot because they'll be able to still use the highway, but only as one lane for n about a month on that project. Thank you, commissioners. The only other question I had is how is the public notified when a bridge is going to be out of commission like that? On these two type of bridges, um, I, I will be personally in contact with the folks from Eros, but um, the, the normal traveling public on the one on that Minnehaha Rural Water Road um, south of Del Rapids, north of Baltic, um, we have message boards. Um, at the highway department that we put out about a week in advance of road closures on our highway system and we'll put those out notifying the public and then we also do a press release that gets sent out to a lot of different agencies I believe that also comes to the Commission office too okay. anything else commissioners shall we take some action here I'll make a motion to approve second it's been moved and seconded to approve this. Uh, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. Motion carries unanimously. Thank you. So we'll move on to Commission uh, Liaison Assignment Reports. Uh, uh, any comments? Were you going to talk about the spring workshop? We sure will. You're the liaison. Well, <laughs> we'll let uh, uh, Commissioner Bender has uh, her eyes sparkling. <laughs> I was just going to give an update on Foundation Park. I was at the um, Sioux Falls Development um, Commission meeting last week, and Foundation Park continues to move forward. Uh, it was reported last week, and you may have seen that the City Council did approve um, the zoning and the subdivision plan for Foundation Park. Their next um, step is to um, work on getting a railway authority put in place out there because a lot of the letters of intent that they have um, are conditioned on railway access and so they were meeting about that even last week and um, there continues to be conversations between the city and the county regarding the roads out there and particularly uh, Marion Road and I visited with DJ a little bit about that and they're kind of waiting to see uh, when letters of intent get um, converted into actual purchase agreements and and um, buildings start going up out there then there'll be further um, further um, movement on the road issues out there. 
Thank you. Any questions for Gene? None. Dick, do you want to talk or should I? Well, I'll talk about one thing that's going to happen tomorrow at the district meeting. Go ahead. Um, there are some bylaws changes, and I'll present them at that meeting to the whatever it is, five counties or something that are represented. So uh, there, there are changes. If anybody would like to see it right ahead of time, I'll I'll have to print it out and, and get it, or I can forward it to you. I'll let you talk about the meeting, at the spring workshop. So Dick. Um, one of the things we talked about was assessing every county $100 to uh, support PILT, which is payment in <coughs> lieu of taxes. Minneapolis County gets none. Pennington County gets $1.7 million in PILT. And many, many other counties get between zero and a couple hundred thousand. Um, and certainly some of the smaller counties were not happy about having to spend $100, but uh, this is what the board decided, and uh, um, that will be brought up in budget, I guess. Um, we had some good programs there, uh, including uh, training on active shooter stuff. We had a nice uh, visit with the attorney general who uh, did uh, uh, talk about uh, this and that to include. He had just come directly from Platt with <coughs> his uh, press conference on the uh, tragedy there, and uh, he did touch on that for a little bit and talked about uh, national issues quite a bit. Uh, apparently he's now president of the National Association of Attorneys General. And um, uh, there were a number of other programs uh, on, uh, uh, on auditing, and uh, we had a great series on, on on the auditors, auditor general's report on counties, and it's uh, way too complex for me to try to explain. I've got uh, three bound uh, documents uh, uh, explaining some of the stuff, and I think we may invite the auditor general to come and put a presentation on here. Uh, but uh, his testimony apparently was uh, instrumental in getting the summer study to. Uh, lean our way, which uh, this has clearly been uh, the most successful uh, legislative season in in my ten years of being a county commissioner. It's the best year we've ever had, and uh, the auditor general is considered to be uh, a real um, part of the the progress there. Anything else? Uh, the uh, this is this was the same presentation they gave to the committee the summer study committee um, I think it really woke up or at least it highlighted some problems the county have to the legislators uh, the governor not excitingly but like uh, did sign a Senate bill too which is the distribution of the alcohol tax uh, I think the overwhelming support in the legislature is is what uh, prompted him to drop his opposition to it. He was only looking out for the state of South Dakota, but we were we were looking at the county's issue in this. Um, it came out of the summer study, and I, I, you know, that's obviously the best way to come into a to a legislative session is with the backing of a, of, a, of one of their own committees that have studied the thing during the summer. Uh, they made comment about the fact that there were several counties that came in and were at attendance on almost all of the uh, uh, all of the summer study meetings the sheriffs were a key part of this thing and I don't know uh, have you heard any word on 1005 we still that's still sitting there waiting for the governor's signature I think he has to do it within the next week maybe Robert has a comment on that as of the LR, according to the LRC website, as of about an hour ago, 1005 has not been signed yet. Checked in with the association yesterday. They have the governor has uh, most of this week remaining in the time frame uh, with, within which he has to decide whether to to act on it or not. So we're um, we're encouraged. Uh, we uh, uh, certainly have uh, uh, gotten um, some encouragement.
encouraging feedback that, that there may may not be any opposition to to signing it, but that that time frame is still open and to this point he has not signed the bill. Um, yeah, I think and we're optimistic on this, but cautiously optimistic. The Senate Bill 2 will mean about another $600,000 in revenue to us beginning uh, July 1. Those revenues come in, uh, I believe, in November, four times a year. So we should start seeing money at the end of, towards the end of this year. Uh, 10.05 will, will mean a lot of fee changes. Some of them are archaic and uh, probably about the same amount of money there too. So the legislature was very legislature was very responsive to us this year. Uh, I hope we kind of lay low now next year on, on monetary <laughs> requests and get this thing all settled. But uh, it was a very good session. Uh, we got a lot of cooperation out of the legislature and they built some pretty good bridges there, I think. Thanks, Dick. Um, you know, I'm gonna just mention the alcohol tax for just a minute. This whole time, counties have received no revenue from alcohol tax, yet we're charged with the uh, prosecution, the defense, the incarceration of all these folks that commit offenses under the influence. It's an incredible subsidy given to the alcohol industry by property tax, and this is the first time where some of those funds have been uh, uh, pointed in our direction, uh, where we carry the burden of, uh, of that alcohol uh, in our community. And that's true for every county in the state. Uh, certainly, uh, it's great progress, and uh, it's still far from fully compensating us for the tens of millions we spend on uh, jails and police and prosecutors. Uh, so, but it's great progress, and I'm thankful. Uh, one other comment on that. Uh, this does not mean a tax increase. So we're taking, simply taking the state alcohol tax and redistributing it from the state getting 75% to the counties getting 25 and the state getting 50 and the cities get the other 50. Uh, the other one is a fees-based deal and that's kind of a user pays deal. It it's, doesn't put the burden on the, on the property taxes. Good point, Dick, and I, I'm going to just say on the fees thing, some of those fees were set in 1872 before statehood and have not increased since till now. Um, so thank you, and uh, it was fun. Anything under uh, new business? Anything under old business? I'd ask for a motion to adjourn into executive session for litigation. So moved. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries unanimously. We're adjourned. <laughs>